Well, well good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to our second press conference today. Quite an exciting one, I have to say, almost historic. We, um, it's become a tradition to have Global Shaper community press conferences here at the annual Summit on the Global Agenda. At the risk of showing my age, I was here in 2012 when the, uh, well, in Dubai for the, for the summit, and uh, the, the Dubai hub launched. I was back here in 2013 when the Abu Dhabi hub launched. It's a great pleasure to be here in 2015 with the launch of a third hub the Global Shaper community. But it's more than just a, an update and a chance to meet all three hubs for the first time here at a World Economic Forum meeting. It's also a chance to hear about the exciting meeting that's been happening elsewhere in the UAE, in Dubai over the weekend, Shape MENA, the regional meeting of the Global Shaper community here for the whole Middle East and North Africa has been unfolding and I think a lot of exciting things have happened here. So plenty of time to ask questions, but before we do, I'm going to ask our panel just to give us an update on what their acti activities have been, their achievements to date, their expectations and hopes for our very newest you know, friend amongst the Shapers community. And also my colleague and dear friend here, Yemi Babington Ash, who is the head of the Global Shaper community at the World Economic yeah. Forum and has, amongst other things, been coordinating activities all around the world and maybe could talk about a global survey which we've been, um, we published over the weekend. First of all, Rula Rabiz, you're a, a consultant here in the UAE, uh, based in Abu Dhabi. You've been the, you're the curator of the Abu Dhabi Hub. Tell us a bit about how it's been going. What have you been doing? Yes, it's been very exciting for the Abu Dhabi Hub. Um, for, so we've officially launched two years ago as Global Shapers, and since we've grown internally, starting with four shapers to become 22 shapers, we formed institutionally within, and we've managed to tackle projects, quick wins at the beginning, which we thought are relevant for the global challenges, but as well are um, important in our uh, part of the world, namely employment. So to that, we've done a series of uh, lectures for university students using our own capabilities since Shapers bring together young professionals with va various backgrounds. And with that, we were hoping to actually introduce uh, university students to what it is really like professionally. We've, this is a project that we scale uh, further across um, more than one university in Abu Dhabi. We've coupled that with digital campaign, aggregating all projects, all uh, employment opportunities that are open in the UAE so that we help uh, students uh, in uh, employment. We also, uh, something that we are very passionate about, we've created an e-commerce platform, uh, which is more an, it's soft launch at this point. It's called the Waha Marketplace. Uh, we put on this platform the artisans' uh, work, and with that, we help them have a better reach and increase their profits. We as well generate, you can think of this as a social enterprise, we generate some profits of this venture, which we, want, we plan to use the proceeds in the next stages to do workshops and help the literacy of these artisans. And by doing that, it's not only, it doesn't only touch on employment, but we are keen on preserving the culture of the UAE with this uh, craft. And as well, I'd like to mention that, um, you know, being a part of this world, the Arabic language is important to us and we like to preserve it. So among the things we've done is try to disseminate more the content of the Global Shapers, which is strictly in English, mostly at least in English at this point, through the channels, uh, the media channels we have access to through the Shapers in Arabic. Uh, this is one thing we've been doing as well. Um, and relevant to, you know, the, how am I call it, the, the kind of fears that have been, you know, being raised with Islam uh, at this point because of the global current affairs, we did an initiative around Ramadan, uh, a, a short clips um, about our, us shapers uh, talking of, of what Ramadan meant for us. Um, as you know, most of the people in the in the UAE um, are expats, uh, but we've learned to embrace and love the culture here and the traditions, and we wanted to capture that in this video. Uh, I'd, last, I'd like to finish off with speaking of our plans for this year, something we're very excited to be working hard on, uh, something around sustainability. So this is a relevant topic, not only globally, but we're very conscious of it's important regionally. We've, some of the quick wins we're looking at is not aside from the digital campaign, raising awareness at efficiency initiatives that, we c that can be easily done, is as well trying to promote um, sort, uh, waste sorting at the source, something that's super easy, but surprisingly is not, not applied anywhere in the region. We're now trying to forge partnerships with the you know, government entities around to be able to scale it, but hopefully you'll be hearing more about it in the near future. 
Well, you're certainly very busy, Rora. <laughs> After two years, how well known are the shapers in Abu Dhabi? I, so this is something we've been working hard on, on achieving. Definitely, you've grown the brand significantly. And to that, as millennials, I think we owe a lot of credit to the social media platform and obviously our word of mouth as much as we can. But social media is obviously very uh, important here, trying to push our content and, and show uh, what we've been managing to do at the grassroots level. Fahim al Kazimi, Director General, Department of Government Relations, the Government of Sharjah in UAE. The welcome very much to our press conference. It's the third hub in the country. Tell us a bit about your plans. For sure. First of all, thanks so much for, for having me here, Oliver. It's an exciting time. I actually started in the Abu Dhabi hub uh, and then moved to Sharjah and decided uh, to, to set up the hub there. I guess I need to introduce Sharjah first. Why Sharjah? The main reason is Sharjah is, for those of you that don't know, the city of education. We have over 18,000 university students that need a voice. And the Global Shapers gives a platform for us to really tackle one of the biggest challenges in the region. The global trends are youth engagement. We all need to hear the voice of the youth. Two thirds to one half of the Middle East region are under the age of 25. And the Global Shapers is a platform and a responsibility for us in Sharjah to give those people a voice. The projects, I'd like to throw out ideas but it's really not my job to. My job is to collect that information that the students, that the young people of Sharjah want to have done in the city, and then find a way to partner up with uh, <clears throat> the public and private sector to get that done. One thing that I'm most excited about in Sharjah, though, is that Sharjah is known as the Emirate and the city where you can actually register NGOs. This might be the first Global Shapers hub in the country that will be formally registered as a legal <laughs> entity gives us a lot more power to get that word out there, to get the name of the Global Shapers Hub out to the community. But well, we look forward to having you back. Sounds Thanks like an so ambitious you. portfolio of projects you've got lined up. Kiba Dawish, Senior Manager, Government and Public Sector for PwC, based in Dubai, current curator. Tell us what happened over the weekend. Um, something very exciting happened over the weekend in Dubai. Uh, we, as a Dubai hub, we hosted uh, Shape Mina 2015 um, under the theme of innovation, driving change through innovation, unleashing the Mina potential. Uh, there were over 170 uh, people who attended uh, from 21 hubs uh, across the region and the world. Uh, we had people who came all the way from uh, Brazil and Australia to attend this, uh, this event. Um, the event was a success uh, um, based on the feedback we received from the participants, the speakers, and the partners. Um, the event was hosted in Dubai, the city of innovation, and that what made it more interesting because we were able to showcase many examples of innovation in the country, how it is being done. Uh, we hosted speakers from uh, the UAE uh, government who talked, for example, about uh, the UAE innovation uh, strategy. Uh, uh, we heard about the leadership of the UAE, what is driving innovation in the country. Uh, in addition, we, we also hosted speakers from, uh, uh, from the uh, Shapers community and from the forum community as young global leaders who also shared with us their experiences, uh, uh, their stories. And, and we, we even tackled uh, uh, issues, for example, innovation in, in food industry. How can you be innovative? Uh, we talked about public-private par uh, partnerships. Uh, we talked about language. We, we covered a variety of topics related to innovation. And basically, Shape Mina 2015 was a platform. We created this platform for, for shapers to, to talk, to discuss, to think, to come up with ideas. And, and in, in the final day, in the closing session, we also discussed a number of ideas related to our community, the Global Shapers community, and how we can bring innovation into the community. Um, overall, uh, we are very satisfied with the results of this uh, event, and uh, we learned a lot from it. And uh, uh, hopefully we can also leverage on what happened in Shape Mina 2015 Dubai on the upcoming Shape Minas in the region. Yemi, how yeah. networked in are the Mina hubs in general to the papers? Oh, thank you very much. 
Uh, it's great to be um, in the UAE and it's great to have three powerful hubs in the UAE. As most of you know, the UAE is a young country that occupies a position in the minds of, if you like, global consciousness that old countries would envy, countries that have been around hundreds of years. And the UAE has done this by being innovative, which is something we learned at Shape Mina, um, but also by being proactive in creating the reality that the country wants to see. Now, for us, this is what we call shaping. And so being in the UAE feels like being at home and having three powerful hubs. Um, they're very connected and the issues they work on are the same issues that we see globally. One of the top issues that shapers really care about is education. Um, this came out as well in our annual survey, which we will talk about in a second, but you can see that they're very active on education as well. In fact, the Dubai Hub's first project was an education-related project as well. Um, so great to see that there's more action there. But these guys are flag bearers and uh, we'll soon have the first registered hub, legally registered, so big milestones here. Feels a bit like a coming of age. And of course, the survey, I'm sure you all covered it a few days ago, so we don't need to go there, but the UAE was rated as the uh, top emerging markets destination for a professional relocation. We won't discuss that, Yemi, but there are other, some other key findings. What do you make of the, uh, of the, of the other similarities globally that, that came out in, the, in that survey? All right, thank you. Well, the survey is, a f is the first Global Shapers annual survey, so it's also a coming of age, if you like, globally for the community where we now take more seriously our responsibility to be a voice for this generation. One big finding um, is the fact that global shapers and young people everywhere care about social and e economic inequality, globally and locally. This was the number one concern. Now this was a bit of a surprise because most other millennial surveys seem to report that young people don't care. And we found this repeated in, both in uh, career choices, the first factor young people look for in a job, is uh, the opportunity to make a difference in their society. Um, we also found this in the choice for goods they would buy. They would buy local, and the number one reason was to support the local economy. So these were some of the other highlights. Of course, um, there was a very popular question about who do you consider a role model? And the late uh, Nelson Mandela came out on top. Um, Elon Musk was also high up there, um, as well as Gandhi and a few others. But I think maybe the, the key, one of the key facts to note for those who take a look at the survey is the 11 people who came out on top of the most admired role models globally were all men. And this is a serious concern. Um, it was a blank field, so people filled in whatever they wanted, but they were all men. And I think it speaks to the work the forum is doing on gender equality. It speaks to the work that many of us are doing to empower women. Um, but that we need to have more female role models out there. Okay, we'll take questions. Um, apart from education, what else are young people in the region passionate about? And what are the shapers going to do to help them achieve their goals? Great question. And you guys can chime in. But I'd say uh, locally, uh, the top priorities were... Um, social economic inequality, youth unemployment, and then government transparency. Education came in fourth place in terms of local concerns. And I think that really speaks to the, the importance of government transparency, the fact that it pipped education, something they're so active on. And that's the global view. But I'd let you chime in if there's anything else you want to say on what people locally might be concerned about. And um, Maybe I... I you know, our, our biggest concern is, is basically job creation, creating jobs for the young people in, in, in our region. Uh, this is definitely one of the biggest challenges uh, we face, and this is linked directly also to, to a number of other challenges, including the, 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 the gap, the big gap between the outcomes of the education system and the demand and what is required in the market. So... This is something uh, I, would, I would say personally is one of the biggest challenges we're facing now. If I can <clears throat> chime in and just add one small point on that. One of the things that is very prevalent here in the Middle East, MENA region in general, is this idea that the youth makes up, I'll use Saudi Arabia, I think it's 51%, people under 25. 
compared to the EU, which is around 27%. And you've got some of the highest unemployment in the region. The solution to which is twofold. One, youth engagement. The forum has spearheaded this initiative since the creation of the Global Shapers platform. The second one, and I think all of our initiatives are trying to tackle this one key element, is inclusive growth. How do you put a growth trajectory for your city, for your economy, for your working population that makes sure nobody gets left behind? And our initiatives as the Global Shapers, in the Abu Dhabi Hub, the Dubai Hub, and in the Sharjah Hub, are really trying to find ways to start that conversation between the public sector, the private sector, and the huge amount of active, educated youth that exist here in the region. I would build on, on the points that, um, that have been particularly important. And to, because of this job mismatch, actually you see uh, this drive towards entrepreneurship. And uh, studies uh, focused on the region comparative to the global scene have showed that millennials are keen on, on better understanding of their needs. And the big, that is much higher actually than global averages. And if you see that, their desire is actually having power and decision making. Um, I thought that was an insight that might be interesting in looking in the Middle East context. Okay. Let's have the next question. Okay. Well, it seems like people are well familiarized with your activities. All, all, all that leads me to, to add is that we look forward to having you back so we can hear how the projects are going. Super. To wish you the very best in the coming year and see you in Dubai, hopefully. Thanks very much. Thank you, thank you for joining us and thank you for watching us live online. Thank you very much.